Section 2.3 is about slope. Slope is the steepness of a line. Slope can be described in a lot of different ways uh, and we're going to look at those and see the comparisons between them. First of all, slope is the change in the y coordinates. It's the change in which a line uh, travels up and down and we also call that the rise. And it's divided by the change in the x coordinate. That's the change left and right which we also call the run. So rise over run is a famous way of looking at slope. How does the up and down movement compare to the left and right? So it ends up being a ratio. Slope can also be found when you know two ordered pairs by using this following formula. So I would say using these two ideas, rise and run and this slope formula, you're going to use rise and run when you have a picture. And you're going to use the formula when you have ordered pairs. Now I'm going to show you how to use both in this following example here. Here we have a picture, so let's, uh, let's try to look at rise and run. What you want to find is you want to find points where the line goes through. Well, I see one of the points the line goes through is right here. And I see another point that it goes through is here. I see another one up here. And even one more here. So what you want to do is you want to start at one of those points and travel to another one. And you want to calculate what the rise and the run is. So I'm going to do that over here. I'm going to look at the rise compared to the run and see what we get. Well, starting from this point, my rise is a movement of up four units. So I start from here and I go up four units. One, two, three, four. So my rise is four. And my run is the movement left and right. Since I'm going to the right, two units, it's a positive two. Now you can have negative rises if you go down. You can have negative runs if you go to the left. So when I look at my rise over run here, I get 4 over 2, which ends up being 2 over 1, which is just a 2. Now, just to show you it can be done differently, what if I start at this point and I go down to this point? Well, then my rise is going to be a negative 4. So let's do it again. Negative 4, and my run is going to be to the left 2, which means a negative 2. Well, negative 4 over negative 2 is still a 2. Either way, my slope is a 2, and that's going to be the same no matter what, I, what two points I choose on the line. So that's using rise over run. Now let's imagine that we wanted to use it by uh, finding a formula. Um, I'm gonna, I know that this point is 1, 1, and I know that this ordered pair here is 3, 3, 5. So those are two ordered pairs that I know, 1, 1, and 3, 5. So my slope, which we also call m, is the difference in the y. So I'm going to subtract these two y values. I'm going to do 5 minus 1. And then it doesn't matter what order you subtract them, but you have to stay consistent. So if I do 5 minus 1, I have to also do 3 minus 1. Well, 5 minus 1 is 4. 3 minus 1 is 2. And I get a slope of 2. So no matter how you do it, whether you count rise and run up and to the right, down and to the left, or you use the slope formula by picking two points and plugging it in, you should always get the same slope. In this case, the slope of this line is positive 2. Here we're asked to find the slope of a line. We're given two points, and we're also asked to graph it. You could do this one of two ways. You could graph the points, draw the line, and then use rise and run if you wanted to do that. Typically, when I'm given two points, I just use my formula. Remember that it doesn't matter which way you subtract them. We could do 4 minus negative 2 or negative 2 minus 4, but we have to stay consistent. I'll choose negative 2 minus 4. Whoops. And that means I have to stay consistent by doing 1 minus negative 1. So negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. 1 minus negative 1 is really 1 plus 1, which is 2. So it looks like my slope here is a negative 3. Now, how does that help me graph? Well, I can take one of these points, negative 1, 4, and then I can use my slope. Now, my slope here is negative 3, but if I write it as a fraction, that gives me a nice rise and a nice run that I can look at. So I can start from my point here and do a rise of negative 3, down 3, and a run of 1 to the right 1. And I can do it again, down 3 to the right 1, down 3 to the right 1. And it gives me a nice group of points that I can graph a line with. Here's a problem that I think is actually easier than the last one. 
because I'm given a point and I'm given a slope. So I can start right with this point, negative 4, negative 3, and I already know the slope is 2 thirds. And just like in the last example, we know that the top number represents the rise and the bottom number represents the run. So I can start at this point and I can say a rise of 2 up 2, run of 3 to the right 3, up 2 to the right 3, up 2 to the right 3. And I can graph my line. Here's a summary of the four kinds of slopes we can have. If you have a line that travels up and to the right, it has a positive slope. I'm going to go over here to this one. If you have a line that travels down and to the right, it has a negative slope. If you have a horizontal line that's straightly across, it has a slope of zero. And if you have a vertical line, one that's directly up and down, we say that that slope is undefined. Now, uh, these two, the zero slope and the undefined slope, are typically confused by people. So I want to give you some ways to remember that. I remember zero slope because if I was a skier on this line and I was trying to ski, then I would, uh, I would go a distance of zero. I would travel nowhere. And that's how I remember that the slope of a horizontal line is a zero slope. And then this other one, if I were to ski on this hill, if I were to try to, to ski, uh, let me put skis on me here. If I were to ski down this hill, when they found my body, it would be undefined. And that's how I remember that a vertical line has a slope that is undefined. Now slope is more than just how steep a line is. It's also a rate of change. It measures how something, a quantity, changes uh, over time, usually compared to time. Now that's called a ratio. When we compare two things, it's a ratio of them. And that's another great example of what slope is. So here's an example of this. We have a graph that shows the number of people taking cruises from 1985 to 2000. And so in 1985 it was 2.2, .2, and we're talking about millions. So 2.2 .2 million people took a cruise, and here's 6.9 million. Now we can figure out what that rate of change is by using our slope formula. Now you might be saying, well, we need ordered pairs for that. Well, we have ordered pairs. If you look at our horizontal axis, we have years. So we can make ordered pairs of 1985 and 2.2 .2 million people. That's an x value on the bottom and a y value on the side. And we can also make an ordered pair out of 2000 and 6.9. So we have an x and a y, an x and a y, we can use our slope formula. So I can subtract the y's, it doesn't matter the order, but I have to stay consistent. So I'm going to do 6.9 minus 2.2, .2. that means I have to do 2000 minus 1985. So we're going to have 4.7 over 15, which is about 0 0.31, we'll round it to that. Now what does this tell us? That means the change, the average change per year is 0.31 million. Now because this is millions, I'm going to take 0.31 and multiply it by a million. And you're going to get 310,000. So the average change per year is about 310,000 people increased as you go from 1985 to 2000. So you can see that rate of change can be used to describe a change over time. Uh, the definition of a family of graphs is a group of graphs that have one or more characteristics in common. Here's some examples of lines. You can see all these lines are y equals x. This one has plus 2, this one has minus 2, but they all are, are y equals x. So they make up a family. This family of graphs are parabolas, and if you notice, they all go through the point 0, 2. So it's a family of parabolas that all go through that point. Now, the parent graph is the simplest of those graphs. So for this one, it'd be the one that was y equals x, the one that goes right through the origin. And for this one, it's probably going to be the green one. It's the one that has the vertex directly at 0, 2. But those are some definitions that have you look at graphs that share common characteristics. Now, we talk about a family of graphs, so we can talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to look at parallel lines, lines that have exactly the same slope. So we want to graph the line that goes through the point negative 1, 3. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to draw my point. I know it goes through this point, And I know that it's parallel to this equation. 
Now because of the definition, that means that my line and this line are going to have the same slope. Well, what is the slope of this line? Um, it's hard to tell what the slope of a line is until you put it in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to rearrange this. Right now it's in standard form. I'm going to rearrange it and put it in slope-intercept form. I'm going to move the x over. So 4y equals negative x minus 4. And then I'm going to divide both sides, uh, or everything, by 4. So y equals negative 1 fourth x minus 1. So now that's slope-intercept form. And it's much easier for me to pick out the slope because remember the slope is the m value. So my m is negative 1 fourth. Now if the slope of this line is negative 1 fourth and I want to find a line that's parallel to that, then I'm going to use the same exact slope. So this is the slope that I'm going to use, negative 1 fourth. And I go back to my point, negative 1 3, and I use rise over run because remember we talked about slope is the change in y over the change in the x or rise over run. So I'm going to go down 1 negative 1 to the right 4. Down 1 to the right 4. Now if you'd prefer, we can take that negative sign and put it with the 4, and we could go up 1 to the left 4. But you end up getting points that are on the same line. So here you have a graph of a line that goes through point negative 1, 3, and it's parallel to this equation which has a slope negative 1, 4. Now we have an example with perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are lines that cross in a right angle. So they don't just cross, but they form an exact right angle. Their slopes are opposite and inverse of each other. Um, that's another way of saying when you multiply their slopes, you get a negative 1. So we want to graph the line that goes through the point negative 3, 1. So I'm going to plot that point. And it's perpendicular to this line. Now just like in the last example, it's hard to know what the slope of this line is if it's not in slope-intercept form. So I'm going to get it there by doing some algebra to it. So negative 2x plus 10, and now I'm going to divide both sides um, by 5. So y equals negative 2 fifths x plus 2. And now it's a lot easier for me to pick out the slope. Um, the m of this equation is negative 2 fifths. Now, I want an equation that's perpendicular to that. So I'm not going to pick negative 2 fifths. I'm going to pick the opposite and the inverse, which means my slope is going to be flipping the fraction and uh, using positive instead of negative. So my slope that I'm going to use is the opposite, positive, and the inverse when you flip it. So I'm going to use 5 halves. That makes my line perpendicular to this equation. So I'm going to use a rise, remember rise over run. I'm going to use a rise of 5 and a run of 2. And I could even do a rise of negative 5 and a run of negative 2, because a negative over a negative would give me a positive. So here you have a line that goes through negative 3, 1. And it's perpendicular to this equation, which is negative 2 fifths for its slope because it has a 5 half. So it's perpendicular to that, and it goes through negative 3, 1. There's my line.